Snuffleupagus. 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 Big bird. Big bird. Snuffleupagus. Oscar the Grouch. Have you ever tried to fit a square block in a round hole? Well, dad of the year over here, I borrowed my daughter's toy to explain what I'm talking about. If I try to put this square block into the round hole, it just doesn't fit. The initial states, square block, round hole, are incompatible, and so the result is that it just doesn't work. There are plenty of examples of compatibility issues in film. Take for example the lead characters in Dear John, a film that my wife forced me to sit through. The main characters completely lack chemistry, and as a result, the story story is unmoving. It just doesn't work, and that's just one example. Let's not even get started with Jack and Jill, or The Last Airbender, or Jar Jar Binks. Okie day! This idea of initial conditions setting us up for failure is the same idea I want to carry into our discussion today. In this discussion, I want to talk to you about superposition in AC. To motivate the need for superposition in AC, let's consider a circuit with two different sources. Each of these sources is going to have a different frequency. Let's say the circuit has a single inductor. We know that in AC, our first task is to convert to phasor domain. However, what we see is that the impedance in the inductor for the first frequency is absolutely different than it is for the second frequency. The impedance differs based on omega. As a result, we can't just use our standard AC nodal or mesh analysis techniques. We need to do something different. The answer, of course, is superposition. What we will do is we will consider the contribution from each independent source taken one at a time, and then add the results up at the end. Let's look at an example. In this example, I would like to find the voltage across the inductor. What I immediately notice is that I have two sources, one of which having a frequency of 5 radians per second and the other having a frequency of 10 radians per second, which are clearly not the same. For the first frequency, J omega 1 L is equal to J 1 ohms. For the second frequency, the impedance across the inductor is J 2 ohms, which are not the same. Similarly, for the capacitor, for the first frequency we get negative J 2 ohms, and for the second frequency we get negative J 1 ohms. To evaluate these, let's start by turning off the right hand source. When I do so, I'm going to use voltage division to find the voltage across the parallel combination of the inductor and the capacitor. To find the voltage here, I'm going to take J1 in parallel with negative J2 divided by 1 plus J1 in parallel with negative J2 and multiply that by the source voltage 10. I forgot to write that, but what we will get at the end is a voltage that is 8.94 angle 26.6 degrees volts. Next, let's turn off the left hand source. We can again use voltage division. We'll find that the voltage across the inductor due to the right hand source is J2 in parallel with 1 over negative J1 plus J2 in parallel with 1 all multiplied by 5 which you will calculate out to be 4.47 angle 63.4 degrees volts. Now in DC we could just say that the voltage we're looking for is the sum of these two voltages we've calculated. However in AC this is not true because these voltages depend entirely on the frequency which I worked in. So what I need to do is I need to find the time domain voltage, which is equal to the sum of each of the time domain voltages, so I must convert them back to the time domain. What we'll find is that VL of T is equal to 8.94 cosine 5T plus 26.6 degrees plus 4.47 cosine of 10T plus 63.4 degrees volts. What's interesting here is that I see that the output then has two frequency contributions. This is exactly why we must do superposition. Again, if we have sources with different frequencies, we can can't use standard nodal or mesh analysis techniques for AC. The initial settings just aren't compatible. It's just like trying to fit a square block into a round hole. It won't work because those initial settings are not compatible. What we need to be able to do is to take the square block and put it in the square hole and then add to that the round block in the round hole. That's it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you feel that I've earned it, I would love it if you would subscribe. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at BDMcFerrin or at DMExplains. This is Dr. McFerrin. Okie day.